In the state of Kentucky, you had Bashir, who was the attorney general in the state, beat the incumbent Republican gubernatorial candidate, Matt Bevin. Now, Bashir won by a slim margin, but he won. And now Bashir is, you know, of course, saying he won, but then Bevin is saying, no, I'm not going to concede. I'm not buying this at all. So, as a result, you have some bad actors getting involved. Kentucky Senate President Robert Stivers threw another wrench into the state's razor thin gubernatorial outcome late Tuesday night, saying that the legislature could decide the race. Stivers said based on his staff's research, the decision could come before the Republican controlled state legislature. So they're gonna try to have Republicans in the state legislature decide who actually won, even though if you count the votes, the person who was the clear winner here was Bashir, Andy Bashir. What, where is the legality in that? Like I'm not understanding what, rock that law is hidden under, isn't it? I thought it was supposed to be, if, the, if you wanna recount, you file a formal request to the judiciary, right, in the well, state? We know that Republicans like to make up rules as they go along. Oh, right. So let's, let's actually hear from legal experts and what they have to say. So one legal expert from Brandeis School of Law says they can't just make them up. Uh, if the House and Senate were just to proceed on vague allegations without proof, that raises serious questions about disenfranchise, disenfranchisement of voters who voted for Attorney General Bashir. It's an extraordinary proposition to suggest that the Attorney uh, General Assembly would take vague allegations of unspecified irregularities and call into question a gubernatorial election. Sounds similar to their president uh, after he even won the election, still talking about the millions <laughs> and millions of votes that were stolen by illegal immigrants. I'm not sure where he was pulling it all from, but every time you hear them uh, accuse one group of doing what they're always trying to do, then you know to look at that source. Mm -hmm. Look at where that information is coming from. They'll probably have that down the pike to pull off anyway. So the dis uh, just pulling out that one line, the disenfranchisement of the voters. When has the Republican Party cared about that? Never, never. <laughs> from, I mean, they From actively... Voting Rights Act, from opposition to that, no. to literally uh, tossing out votes from people or making sure that the machines aren't uh, 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 aren't uh, counting votes the way that they should be. The, ir the irony's votes. way too yeah. The irony's way too strong for 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 them to continue to go out on this route, but they will anyway until someone actually calls them out and says this is the Republican Party. There needs to be that level of of strength in your statement. Yeah. What's incredible about Republicans, both on a local and national level, is. They know they can't win based on their messages, yeah. right? They know that they don't have any popular political positions to really run on and win on. And so they try to game the system to their advantage so they can literally cheat to win, mm -hmm. right? They do it when it comes to changing voter ID laws. They do it when it comes to gerrymandering mm -hmm. and drawing up districts in a way that puts them at a incredible advantage. Their ideas are unpopular. And what we need on the left is more of that firebrand, you know, behavior, like the AOC like behavior where you call it what it is, you call it out. Mm -hmm. I just feel like Democrats overall haven't done a good job in calling it out, well, right? Yeah, yeah. They always play defense, they never play offense. I think it's time to play offense. Yeah, the playbook a lot of times Republicans is fear. We talked about Bevin and, and uh, the, this, the school uh, agenda he had when teachers were striking. You, you, you pump fear first, because our voters are fearful and they're gonna be motivated by fear and anger. So that's why he went with the, hey, kid's gonna get raped today. Mm -hmm. Then go, oh my God, kids are getting raped. Just go with the most extreme, because your, 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 your base is gonna be riled up by that. Right. Then you go with voter suppression, you go with, then after you've lost that with, off voter suppression and fear, then you just subvert the whole process at the end of it all. Well, and I think one of the ways, and I'm not sure I've seen Democrats come up with a skillful way to tackle the extreme racism and xenophobia that comes out of the right. Like I, I'm surprised actually that they went in, you know, in Kentucky with the socialism rather than immigrants are coming for your jobs, you know, mm -hmm. which seems sort of like, you know, that's that's like hit number one and it always kind of works and everyone dances to it. Um, it's a terrible song. <laughs> but the point is, is I think Democrats need not just an economic populist message, but also one that is inclusive, one that is anti-racist, mm -hmm. and one that says, listen, all 
all of these economic reforms help all of us, and they also primarily benefit people of color, working class mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. of color, uh, and immigrants aren't stealing your jobs. Um, it's corporations who aren't actually giving a fair shake to their workers, uh, who are you know uh, taking away money from public education. It's mm -hmm. governors who take millions of dollars out of the public education system that is a threat to your job and your stability. Yeah, I mean, look, again, just to give you an example of what I would do if, if I were playing offense, and that's at this point in the game, I, I really think it's the most important thing to do, is every time I suspect that anti-immigrant message is gonna come up, I'm gonna bring up the fact that Donald Trump hired foreign workers mm -hmm. as soon as he got elected, it was the first thing he did. He yeah. raised the cap on foreign workers and then Trump properties immediately applied for over 70 foreign workers for their company, okay? Absolutely. What happened to America first? They're all lies, right? I would hit them with that before they can hit me. There's so mm -hmm. much hypocrisy mm -hmm. there, yeah. it's, it's rich, <laughs> you can hit it all. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges, you got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.